Hi everyone, it's the day after I did the filming for this video and this is the result of what I did in the video. It's a sheet of 140 pound arches watercolor paper that is stretched on a piece of one quarter inch thick masonite. Until recently I painted exclusively on 300 pound arches watercolor paper and because of the weight of the 300 pound paper it didn't require stretching to keep it flat while painting. But about a year ago I switched to 140 pound arches cold press. And although you can paint on this paper without stretching it, if you want it to remain absolutely flat during the painting process, it needs to be stretched. In this video, I'll walk you through every step of the traditional watercolor paper stretching process. The tools and materials that I'll need to use for stretching watercolor paper are, first and foremost, the mounting board. And I like to use masonite that's a quarter inch thick and been coated with multiple coats back and front of polycrylic protective varnish. This seals the masonite and prevents any impurities that might be in the wood fiber from leaching out onto the wet watercolor paper. And of course you need a sheet of watercolor paper that fits the size of the board that you're using. And the watercolor paper that I'll be using in the demonstration is 140 pound cold press arches watercolor paper. You'll need gummed paper tape. This is craft tape that I purchased from an art supply shop. It has glue on one side of it that when you moisten it, it'll adhere to the surface of the paper. I use additional glue. I don't moisten my tape with water, I moisten it with glue. This happens to be an archival glue, Jade 711. You could also use white Elmer's glue for this purpose. And of course a brush to apply the glue with. This is a one inch brush, I actually prefer a two inch brush, I just don't happen to have one laying around right now. Another brush that you're going to need, a wide brush, and I use this after the paper has been soaked and applied to the Masonite, I work out any bubbles with this brush right over here. A nice soft three inch brush. Sponge, you'll need a sponge. You'll see what I do with this when we watch the video. And a pencil to mark off your borders. Another item that comes in handy is a T square. And of course, a soaking tray for the paper. You'll fill the tray up with water, place the paper in it, and let it soak. If you don't have a tray, this is a very convenient solution. Plastic sheeting that I purchased at a local hardware store. To mount a new clean piece of watercolor paper, this is 140 pound Archer's Cold Press. I'm mounting it on a piece of masonite that's been varnished many times, both front and back, to make it totally waterproof. I don't want any of the impurities in the mounting board leaching out onto my paper and damaging the paper. This is the classic method of stretching watercolor paper. I've used it for the past two semesters instead of my, my own personal way of doing it. And um, I found it really works well when you do it right. My method also involves stapling into the paper. And I have a video on, out on that on YouTube. Um, it's appropriate for very large sheets of paper, but I think it's overkill for the smaller size. So let's get to it. First thing I do is measure off the one inch mark. I will be using two inch brown gummed craft tape. Old fashioned packaging tape. That's what it is. So we mark off our, our lines, making sure everything is parallel to the edge of the paper. One inch, 
This works out perfect because we're using two inch tape. Okay. So our paper is marked off. The next thing I do is I pre-cut my gummed tape. Yeah, that'll, that's perfect. That's more than enough. Good. And the smaller dimension. I like to have everything ready to go. I don't want anything slowing me up once I get into the actual process of mounting the paper on the board. So, I'll put this back in a plastic seal -a meal bag to keep the, the gum fresh. We have our lengths of tape ready to go. Our paper has been measured out. Next step with the paper is to dampen it. Now to dampen it, you could soak it in a tray large enough to accommodate the size, but you really don't need anything other than a piece of clean plastic. And I often do this in class with my students because we just don't have enough trays to go around. So what we can do is place the paper on the plastic. Then with a clean, large brush, make sure it's really clean or sponge, that would work too. Take some clean water and wet the paper. Not hot. The water is cool, not cold either. I, I like it just cool to the touch. I'm making sure I'm thoroughly soaking this paper. Okay, flip it over again. Make sure there are no dry spots. Okay, what do I do next? How do I allow this paper to hydrate itself? I'll take my plastic and cover it and leave it sealed for a maximum of 20 minutes. That's all you really need. I've returned after about 10 minutes just to make sure it's as wet as it needs to be. Let's take a look. Yeah, it looks, looks pretty sopping wet, but I could always add a little bit more water. Could let it go for another 10 minutes. This is simply a very effective way of doing it if you don't have a bin large enough to accommodate your paper. Of course, in my studio, I do have a small tray ready to go. So I'll show you how I use the tray. I take my paper that I've already indicated, the one inch border, and I float it into the tray and submerge it into water that's comfortably cool haven't thoroughly submerged it. I flip it over just to make sure no air bubbles prevented a thorough moistening of the paper. And then I leave it for a good 20 minutes. Not much more, not much more is needed. The paper is soaked for about 20, 25 minutes. It's thoroughly saturated. You can see how limp it's become. So the next step is to transfer it 
to my masonite mounting board. Being careful not to damage the paper, I slide it over to my board. After it's positioned on my board, I like to blot up the excess water because there's just way too much water on the paper itself. And that will result in the watercolor paper lifting from the tape. I pre-cut my strips of brown tape and I'm ready to jump in to the next step which is taping down the paper to the mounting board. And to continue with this next step, I'll use the example of the watercolor paper that I sealed in plastic to hydrate it. It's been about 20 minutes. Now we'll take a look. And yes, it looks thoroughly hydrated and ready to go. So, carefully lift it out so I don't fold it in some strange way. And I position it on the board. Now, what I like to do after that is done is take my brush and just work it down to make sure the paper is really flush on the surface of this varnished piece of masonite. I'm a little crooked here, but that's okay. No big deal. I'm working out bubbles that I see underneath. Now, this is a soaked piece of paper. The next step is to simply tape it down. And in this method, we're not going to use any staples. I'd like to start with the longest side. So I take my pre-cut longest piece of tape, gummed paper tape. It's the kind of gum tape that you have to wet to apply. But I don't wet it with water. I wet it with... You could use Elmer's glue. I use an archival glue. I use Jade 711. You could also use Line Coach glue. And in here, so I don't make a mess, and I should be using a one inch brush, or I should say a two inch brush. That would make it go a lot cleaner. I wet the tape with the glue. This is an important step. Find if you don't do it this way, there is a chance that the tape will lift up. So I like to use the additional glue. I wet the tape, then very carefully, I float the tape and position it along that edge. Having done that, I like to use a round sponge. You don't need a round sponge, you can use a flat one too. Of course, the sponge has to be cleaned and slightly dampened. That's what I'm doing right now, squeezing the water out. And with the sponge, I press the tape down and I wipe off any glue that may have seeped out. Now I'll take my shorter length, butter it up with glue to dampen the surface. You don't want huge quantities of glue. You don't want the glue running all over the place and ruining your paper. You just want enough to wet it. And position the tape along the edge. Take your sponge and pat it down. Let's go to the next side. So I take the pre-cut length for this side. 
remember once in class, I had 15 people doing this at the same time. The room stunk of glue. Some people were using Elmer's glue. I don't think that really destroys the archival nature of the paper. As long as you, you know, you remove the tape eventually. It's not something that's going to be on your painting permanently. But I just feel better using quality archival glue. Neutral acid pH. I just rinsed my sponge off in the sink to get off residual glue. Oh, that is nice. The last side over here. Wipe it off with a nice, clean, damp sponge and pressing it down. The key to making this work is to allow it to dry in a totally flat position like you see it here. I'm not going to budge this. I'm going to leave this overnight. And that's the other thing. I let it dry for a solid 12 hours or more. You don't want to prop it up at an angle. If you prop it up at an angle, that'll cause the water to work its way down. All the residual water that you have in the paper will work its way down, and the paper will lift up at the, the bottom of the, the angle. So you don't want to do that, thinking that it'll accelerate the drying. You also don't want to put a fan on it. I find that rapid drying is not a good thing for the paper. Slow drying will assure perfect results. So, you now I see a little buckle in here, but that's no big deal. That's going to dry nice and tight. No staples necessary with this method. Okay. I'll close up my glue for another day and I'll wash off the brush and the sponge and let this dry. We'll come back tomorrow morning and begin a new watercolor demo on this stretched piece of watercolor paper. It is the next day. The paper is beautifully stretched. Everything is completely dry. Why is taping down the paper referred to as stretching the watercolor paper? Here's what happens. When you soak the paper, the paper absorbs water and it expands. By letting it soak for 20 minutes, it expands to its maximum possible dimension while it's wet. Now, having placed the wet paper on the masonite, then taping it down while it is still soaking wet, the paper gradually begins to dry. As it dries, it starts to contract and gets tighter and tighter, and the glue locks everything in place. Now, as I start to paint the image and develop my watercolor and re-wet the paper, the wet paper can only expand to the maximum size that it originally was at when I removed it from the water and taped it down. Because it was completely flat when I taped it down at its maximum dimension, it can no longer expand beyond that dimension, so it'll always remain flat. That's the beauty of stretching watercolor paper. Hope you enjoyed this demonstration on how to stretch watercolor paper.